I would like you to I'd like to introduce Jeremy Hill, director of the Center for Economic Development and Business Research. Well, I've learned a few things. If you've been watching Twitter, I now have a new nickname. Thanks to Jack, I'm now the taskmaster that has been going flying through this Twitter. So thank you for that. I also thought it was pretty interesting from, uh, from Bill Swellbar when he's talking about the airport and the growth here. We brought this, this topic in because of this new airport that we're building. And I think it's a big topic and something that's important for our economy as a strategy. And to see the growth that he had on those numbers was important. But I think it also brought up some interesting policy questions that the state has to think about in the next couple years when you talk about the regional airports and some of the smaller uh, airports across the state. There's some discussions that need to be had and we might need to come back maybe at a, a policy event sometime in the future to think about those. Uh, the other slide I thought was, was really useful and, and kind of fun from Jack um, is the slide where he had home values and equity values and how it changed or influence spending. I've heard those before, and I thought that was a really useful slide to look at. I also would plug that if you like that kind of information, we have our misery index, which uses home value as a key factor to understand what consumers are feeling like here in Wichita and some of our competitor areas around the, the state and region. All right, so last year I used Wizard of Oz theme to explain what I was seeing going on within the regional economy. And we used Dorothy to represent the labor market. And I said the labor market was determined and resourceful and would re-engage in 2014, and we've seen that. Labor force has started to improve and continues to improve. I also spent a lot of time talking about the structural issues in the labor market, and I still think we have a real problem here in Wichita that we haven't quite addressed, and we need to come to it pretty soon. The Tin Man represented industry, and for industry, two years ago, we, remember we said they were sitting on their hands. Last year, we said they're gonna be much more strategic in their investment. Now, they're gonna go a lot of fast, and we've seen that. We saw a merger in aerospace, we've seen commercial development, we've seen retail development. And two weeks ago, the Chamber had their business to business event, just over here in Century Two, the exposure, and it was the first time they sold out. It's an example of businesses really trying to be very strategic in their investment, trying to find those customers. Then we had the lion, and the lion represented government. We talked about how government has a role and where that role was last year. And we talked about the scarecrow, representing agriculture, how farm income had been up and how farm income it was gonna start coming down a little bit. And it's been affecting our economy there. Now, last year, we said moderate growth would not occur until aviation seeds consistent positive sign. And we have not seen consistent positive sign in, in aviation. So that's why we haven't really had that real moderate growth. And also last year, we said 2014 would grow by 1.2%. Now, the first half of this year was a struggle for Wichita. We really weren't getting into that. But as of August, the August over August numbers are exactly 1.2%, 3,300 jobs. And we still have a few more months to get that 119 jobs left. And we're right on target for our forecasts. All right, for this year, we weren't gonna have a theme, but as the staff and I were sitting around the board table, science emerged. And I would also kind of recognize that some of the staff members resemble some of the people in that hit TV show, Big Bang Theory. Especially since I sit in the same chair. I don't know if that makes me Sheldon Cooper or not, but I will leave it, I will just leave it at that for you. Uh, so what I will do is I'll talk about physics. And physics is how matter and its motion move through space and time. And we're gonna use that to talk about how employment is moving through space and time here. So you can geek out with us a little bit. Then we're gonna talk about biology, where it's life and living organisms to talk about our workforce and how it's functioning. And then we're gonna go over to chemistry and talk about how the uh, behavior and composition of an object. And for us, that object is South Central Kansas. And the behavior is how business environment is really feeling and, and, and acting. If uh, Sheldon Cooper was here, he would ask if it was positively or negatively charged economy, right? That's, anyway, that was, I thought that was funny. But <laughs> that's my last real joke, so don't worry about that. So anyway, for those components, and you look at them, they're all going to come together to the central idea of what's the economy. We're trying to give you an overall feeling of how, what we see going on. So again, let's start with physics, which is how matter and its motion move through space and time. 
And when you think of that, we, uh, we're going to use momentum. And momentum is that power and energy in objects. You might remember back in your high school class, they talked about the train moving down that track. You needed two things for that momentum. First is velocity, is the speed at which it's going. And the next one is mass, the weight of the object. You multiply them together to get momentum. So here is how you're going to get a little geeked out with us. If you look at the horizontal line, that is the velocity. That's the simple annualized change in employment. The further you get away from the center on either side, the velocity is increasing. And you look at the vertical line, that's the annual difference in ch uh, change in employment. And all the dots are going to be all the employment sectors. Now, the bubbles is the size of the momentum. The bigger the bubble, the bigger the momentum. The bigger impact it's having on this overall slide. You want to be in the top right corner because there's more velocity and more uh, mass. You don't want to be in the bottom left corner. And when you see this, you're probably already going to figure out what that largest bubble is during this time period. Manufacturing really is aerospace. Both the mass and the volume declined. We lost jobs, which lost income. And you can actually kind of see this just without looking over time. It's pulled a lot of those other support sectors towards this bottom left quadrant during this period of time. Now, the second largest bubble here is information, which is news and telecommunications. It has a high velocity, but really a low mass. It's not going to really show up on the next couple slides, so I'm going to ignore that going forward. Then you have leisure and hospitality, which is positive. You have professional services. And the last one I'm going to use consistently here is the mining construction. Now, if I had used 2008 to 2012, this bubble would have been pretty big in the bottom left quadrant. But I uh, just wanted you to note that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this uh, momentum idea and move it to the most recent two-year period. So you can compare that. So what's happening over the last two years versus the five-year period? The first thing you'll notice is there's more bubbles over in that top right quadrant. And you'll also notice a pretty big momentum coming up there. There's a driver to this economy that's actually helped propelling the sector and this regional economy up. What you also is affecting this is the very small bubble during this period of time relative to the other ones. Manufacturing had less velocity, less mass, and it wasn't affecting our economy as it was over that five-year period. Then you add leisure and hospitality. Well, over this period of time, we had farm income coming up. We had some oil income across the state. We also had management of companies bringing, in, bringing people in here, you know, fueling that leisure and hospitality, made that bubble a little bit bigger. And professional services, that management of companies, employment agencies. And we propose now that we have Usually in the professional services, a lot of support sector, but there are some primary drivers in this sector now that are growing our economy. And it's been kind of masked by the other side of our economy over on the bottom left quadrant. We're not really seeing all the positive stuff because we hear the net difference at the, at the aggregate level. Then you see mining and construction over here. Most of this is in the construction, but we've had some oil-related jobs that were created uh, during this period of time. Now here's the most recent 12-month period. And you can see two things, right? There's something going further off in that top right quadrant, and you see something happening in the bottom left quadrant. You probably already know this. The last 12-month period, aviation didn't do so well in this, this economy and started pulling some of the sectors back to that bottom left quadrant. And then you get leisure and hospitality coming back to more of a normal expectation for that sector. Then you have professional services that continue to grow. We also added some technology firms, right? There are some other sectors that are starting to merge with this professional services that, is, that are growing and continue to grow. When you look at those growth rates in comparison, again, when you think at net, we have really slow growth, but there are some good things happening. And then you have mining and construction. And you should notice that when you look at the velocity, it's high velocity, but, but low uh, mass. Now, Again, you think about this image, there's a shift in how this economy is working. We have a little bit of a different primary driver to this economy. And then you think about aerospace, right? Over the five-year period, the first part of it, it was pulling our, this economy down. It had a significant effect. And then you come to the more recent period, is it still affecting us? It still is because it brings in wages. It affects other support sectors. But you also see something else going on, some of these other sectors within professional services that are growing this economy. Now let's go to biology. Now biology is the, the life and living organisms. We're going to talk about the workforce. And those people who recognize this are probably people who grew up between 1957 and the 1980s. 
right? And or the parents of them, those people who are really confused by this image and probably have their phone out already are all the millennials in, in this room. The sea monkeys is a, is a real thing. It was, a, it was one of the po most popular aquatic pets for, for kids. And it was a comic book series. It is actually a unique biological function. It is a brine shrimp. And the brine shrimp can go completely dormant without food or water for a long period of time. You add water to it and it can almost come back to life magical. It seems magical. And I want to think about this for a second to give you an idea. When you talk about long-term unemployment at the national level, there's a lot of conversation about people losing their skills and, and not having as much value to the marketplace the longer they're out. I want to propose that manufacturing is a little bit different and even a little bit more different here because of the nature that we have here. Manufacturing, we've had several recessions where people dropped out six months, a year, a little bit longer. They retooled and came back and they were re-energized into the labor market. So our manufacturing has a little bit different function and they're in high demand on the national level. But if you look at the structure of our economy, you saw how negative it was with an aerospace. Aerospace is not gonna come back to create those jobs. So the question is, how are we gonna re-employ the people that are, our, are one of our largest resources and assets? If you look at unemployment insurance claims, there's still a lot of people that are production workers, they're, they're claiming unemployment, a lot of discouraged workers in this sector. How are you gonna re-engage the most important sector when aerospace is not going to do it? This is something our community really has to focus in on and think about in a larger context where we're gonna ruin the most precious resource we have is the production worker. All right, we did a survey of businesses and talked about the contingent workforce. This is not only temporary, seasonal, contract, and part-time jobs. And I want you to focus your eyes on the top half, the part-time part workers. 45% said they increased the amount of part-time workers over the last five years. Right? We asked them, what is, what's the kind of skills these part-time workers are using during these last five years? They said, this is an entry-level position. This is low-skilled type of jobs, as you would expect. And seven out of 10 businesses also said that um, this was mutually beneficial to the employee. That is, these people wanted part-time jobs because they wanted extra cash because they were trying to pay bills or they're trying to get a foot in the door or get some skills. What about the next five years? Well, the majority of companies said, this is a new way of doing businesses. We've increased it and we're gonna keep this in how we deliver our goods and services. I have a little bit of a concern uh, with this, however, especially with millennials. I'm not sure millennials really understand the value of how this labor market is going to work with part-time workers moving forward, right? If they go to the first part-time worker and don't realize that that is actually a stepping stone for full-time work or for a career ladder, they're going to be stuck in the lower skill and not really have that skill building as some other sectors or we did historically. Now you get to the temporary contract workers, the seasonal workers. Again, you have 41% saying they increased the percent of the labor market doing this. 18% decreased, but I think it would be larger. However, aggregate demand, especially our airspace, decreased. So I think this is actually larger than what our graphic is showing. And then you ask them, why do you want more of this? So they were echoing some of the stuff on the national scene. They said this is a great way to test out employees to cost management or value-added strategy. You ask them what they're gonna do over the next five years, and it's the same thing. This is a new strategy. We have more contract temporary seasonal workers. This is the way of doing business. This is how the labor market is moving forward. Now, I think there's also implications to this as well. Look at our production workers who've had historic long-term agreements. Now they have to think about themselves in a completely different way. I think businesses are gonna come back in a few years and say, we don't have enough skills, but if you really think about those skill levels, they, people weren't moving up in these other ways, and so I think there could be some problems in the long term. Coming back to this, the production worker is underutilized right now. This is one of the best assets we have here, and we're kind of ignoring it in some ways, not realizing how we need to get them re-engaged with other manufacturing or industries that have demand for that. They're an asset, but it's also a concern if we wait too long. It's a contingent workforce. It's going to move forward. I think there's long-term implications. There are several reasons why businesses are wanting to do this, but it really comes down to be flexibility. They need to have flexibility to deal with markets and deal with costs. Now let's get to chemistry. Chemistry is the behavior and composition of an object. And again, we're talking about South Central Kansas and business environment and how they're interacting. We asked for several years now to rank their concerns 
of what was going on in the global market. Last year I said the mindset had shifted and it really did shift. It went from thinking about policies that didn't affect me, it was the top ones, and global events to things that are factors of demand looking for growth. So last year US competitive position went to number one. This year global demand for goods and services went from third to second. Now, I should be noted that ISIS and the Ebola and all that stuff came out after we did the survey, so those weren't included or would probably affected some of the answers. That same trend away from global events and policies to more factors of demands really shows up in this national one, because a few years ago, few years ago, those policy ones were the top part of our list. Now they're the bottom three. Matter of fact, monetary policy went from fifth place to eighth place this year. We already talked about long-term unemployment, so let me talk about the federal debt. The federal debt has actually declined sharply the last couple of years, right? So you think this is a better thing. However, you look at the Congressional Budget Office, when you look at the laws governing the taxes and spending, the U.S. is in a bad position over the next decade for four reasons. First, the interest payments are going to continue to go up. Second, it's going to restrain long-term growth for the U.S. And third, the Congress will not be able to react to other things that happening in the environment and the economy going forward. The last one, fiscal crisis. And we've even talked about fiscal crisis and how it's affect consumers' behavior. We need to get, figure this out or this will be a concern dragging the economy going forward. State and local, last year's state tax policy was number one. It dropped to number two. And then employment growth came up. And I want to pause here on employment growth because there is something deeper in this idea of employment growth, especially here. So the state and Wichita are a slow growth economy, and that is just, it is going very slow right now. So when you think about a fast growing economy, you have upward pressure on prices, right? Because the demand is greater than supply. The wages start to come up. You get more investments. You deleverage all the costs and deleveraging some of the costs during this long period of time is a good thing, right? This is self, a self-propelling kind of function. In science, this is called a positive feedback loop. I want you to think back to your grandma's backyard where they had an apple tree. There's an apple on there, and as soon as it starts to ripen, it produces ethylene, a chemical. That ethylene actually helps ripen the apples next to it. They produce ethylene, and then all of a sudden, the whole apple tree ripens almost at one point in time. It's an accelerated process. Faster growing economies get more investments, and they continue to accelerate. So now let's look at a slow growth economy. In a slow growth economy, you get saddled with infrastructure costs, you get sticky wages. Businesses, when they're especially talking about companies that are in multiple markets, when they think about this market or another market, where are they going to invest? They're going to reinvest in the faster growing ones where they know they can get a return in these slower growing ones where their return's not going to be as great. Right? It's almost as if the ethylene is not being produced in the apple. I actually had an apple tree a number of years ago. It wasn't really producing root of fruit and wasn't ripening right. And so I asked someone how to take care of it. it was a, I think it was a wise tale. But they told me to take an iron bar and start beating the tree to scare it to death. Don't worry, I did not beat the apple tree. I didn't see the need. I could go to the store to get apples. Uh, but that was their, their solution to it. Now I want you to think further. What if that, because that apple tree, because it's a slow growth economy, what the apple falls down onto the ground and starts to decay. The same science that happened to a fast growing economy happens to this. You might have heard the saying, one bad apple will spoil the bunch. Right? It will start to decay and start to have effects on other parts of the economy. And what we need to think about in Kansas and in Wichita is a slow growth economy really preventing further development, further investments. It's that growth behind it that is slowing us down. We're also losing ground to other communities because we have this continued expectation as well of being a slow growth economy. All right, this is a good time to talk about the business environment and conditions. We've done this six years and had some great insights from these companies. This year, 30% of the businesses said that material costs or input costs was gonna, it had increased, right? And that makes sense. You have about 2% inflation, and Jack talked quite a bit about inflation. You look at the Midwest and you look at uh, cities our size, they actually had a little bit less. The Midwest went a little less because of energy, and that's actually a good thing. Our energy, because the prices are cheaper, makes our products more cheaper on the global market. That's a good thing. And also, the Midwest has some weaker demand, and that's really what we have, is some weaker demand in here. Nevertheless, it increased about, about, about 30% said so they increased material costs. 
The prices that they charged their customers, we have only about 15% said that they had increased the price. So what does this mean? Unfortunately, I think this still means that the businesses here see the market as very price sensitive, see the customers as price sensitive. When you have a weak economy and you don't think that you can increase those prices, that puts a lot of pressure on the company. Future expectations, well again, just shy of 30% said, yeah, we're gonna have more increased prices over the next year. Prices that they charged their customers in the next year, however, only 8% said they would increase. Now this is really a pessimistic point of view here if you think about it, right? If, if you're one way to have profit is to increase prices, this is not gonna be bode well to the financial environment that we have. The only thing that's gonna fix this is volume demand, right? You produce a lot more, and I'm not so sure our market is producing a lot more to cover up in the volume demand. So what is their, their expectations? Well, 35%, I'm happy to say, said they were thinking about hiring new employees over the next year. The majority of them said status quo, and, then, and concerning, 11% said they would probably decline in employment. This is probably the financial system and those weak economy that we're talking about, right? Look at the outlook for, the, for this uh, next year. 40% said moderate growth, and it should be noted, nobody said strong growth in this. I do want to leave you a little bit on a positive note here. Last year, only 14 businesses said moderate growth. So there is more optimism for moderate growth, but no one at all even began to say there's anything strong growth in our economy. All right, so the business environment. We're talking a whole lot less about policy that do doesn't directly affect me and events that doesn't directly affect me. And we're trying to figure out just how to survive, right? We're going to invest to survive, to keep growing, and we're going to be very strategic and very active and engaged there. You look at this overall environment, costs are increasing because the national economy is growing, right? You heard a lot of positive news. However, when those prices are going and we have a slower, weaker economy, it's going to be very price sensitive here. Overall, there's more optimism for moderate growth, but, and you gotta think about this, some of those companies said they might experience losses in 2015, and I'm not sure you weren't really wanting this kind of message today. Overall economy, so Moody says there's accelerated growth in employment about 2.2% 2 .2 in 2014, and at an acceleration of 2.4% next year. Kansas and Wichita are nowhere no close to that. Our forecast for Kansas is 1.7% growth for 2015. Kansas City is going to be pretty close to that. Wichita is 1.5%. Topeka is a little bit less than that. The real growth in our economy is going to be in our mid-sized cities, which I shared last time. Hayes and Dodge, places like that, are really having the bulk of growth in this economy. The sectors that are growing across the state are professional services and healthcare. It's been seven, eight years before I actually was here when they, CDBR actually showed this graphic. And I thought it was a good time to bring this graphic back. Uh, a long time ago, they said corporate profits was a great predictor for what's going on in aerospace. And you see aerospace products and parts. So I brought this back to kind of re-examine it, to give us a different feel of something that we looked at several times in the past. Corporate prof oh, my aviation friends, by the way, said this doesn't work anymore. The first day I got into town, by the way. This is my sixth conference. Can you believe that? Uh, and so it's sure enough, it does not predict it. The corporate profits did not go down nearly as much as, uh, as the aircraft products and parts. And corporate prof profits are now record highs, right? It no longer represents this market. And I'm not even breaking this down to the business jets, which is even less of a connection. Now I want to back up two years ago when Abelafia came here. And he said, we might already, he, aviation analysts, he might already be at a new, or, new normal. This new aggregate demand might have completely shifted. He's, he proposed that. And if there is some hope that aviation was going to like reaccelerate at some point in time, I think at this point we should shred that hope. We are at our new normal. That doesn't mean a bad thing. We are at this new normal. And our growth, as we have in here, for general aviation, is going to be slow growth. It's going to be slow growth because of what's going on in the global and the U.S. economy. It's improving. For military, we say it's going to be weak, right, because of the federal government, but there's some contracts going to help those aerospace-related jobs. Commercial employment, while well, growth is pending the sustained productivity, if we can milk more value out of a computer or technology, they're going to do that, right? So I think employment is going to continue to trickle in for commercial until we get to that tipping point. That tipping point might be at the end of 2015 or into 2016. Let me give you some positive news so you don't feel too negative from this. First is Gamma said 
that business jets shipments increased 12.4% the first half of this year over the first half of last year. Also, if you look at aerospace exports from Kansas to the rest of the world, it was up 21% in July. So their demand is improving. This market is improving, although I, it's just a different structure. And I really think it was important to emphasize we're in a different environment now. All right, it, we've talked about Kansas oil last year. I think it was good to also talk about it again this year. The production of oil in Kansas continues to increase about 5% a year. At the national level, it's increasing about 14% a year. We already had the employment changes in this. We had to ramp up in some temporary workers. We had some, a lot of really income that came from it, but this is our new normal. I don't think there's gonna be anything else to expect from this. Construction has improved significantly. This used to be the second highest group receiving unemployment benefits as a concentration. It's been absorbed into the labor market. And overall, when you look at this whole sector, we're forecasting it to grow about 560 jobs in 2015. It should be noted this is still about 1,000 to 1,200 jobs below its previous peak. So although we're improving, it's still coming from a pretty low bottom. The durable sector, we show growing just less than 1%. Durables in the past really meant aerospace. However, aerospace continued to decline, and we actually had other sectors, fabricated metals, machinery manufacturing, that actually were growing during this period of time. As of today, these other durables in the sector represent a third of the sector. It is now a larger percent of what we have in our economy. And it's important to note. Now, we have mixed demand opportunities for this because although we have machinery and we have fabricated metals, part of the product demand still goes back to aerospace, so we still have kind of mixed, mixed uh, demand opportunities for it. For the non-durable sector, this is meat and food processing, chemicals and plastics. We have about 7,000 plus jobs in the sector. Uh, we're saying it's, it's flat. However, if you really look inside this, some sectors are growing and some sectors are declining. Retail sales. We have been very pessimistic on our retail sales for several years because the fundamentals really weren't there. So let me talk about why we're seeing, and this is relative to us versus his, his retail sales are really stronger when you look at, because um, we did it by real terms. When you think about the fundamentals coming here, we, our market continues to expand. This is a positive thing. It's, it is expanding, and we're having a tightening of labor market within the professional services sector, which is actually bumping up a lot of wages in the state. It's really tight here. And we have com competition to our regional neighbors, and there's prices on the national scale, and we have fuel costs. There's a lot of other things that are going into our retail sales. So we're actually showing a 1.4% increase in retail sales, which is the strongest one I think we've had in a long, long time. Uh, Kansas total wages and manufacturing wages we're showing to increase. Depends on what inflation happens over this next year. Depends on how much real income consumers have. But it's, it's very likely they'll have some real income over this next year, which we've really had lower income for a longer period of time than the US has. So although it's a little stronger in retail sales, we're actually a little bit more negative when it comes to retail employment because we had a lot of retail development over this last year. I think we hired a lot more people than probably the demand could really afford it. So we're a little bit more softer to it and online shopping, some other things that, that Jack hit. When you look at the transportation and utility sector, it's really mostly truck transportation. This is a function of the general economy, so we don't really see a lot going on in that one. Talked a lot about professional services, so I'll skip that. Health services, we're gonna see continued growth in these other sectors of healthcare, which is the therapist, outpatient, diagnostic labs, residential care facilities. There's some tight pressures in this labor market as well. There's not enough people to support the skills that we need in those sectors. Financial services, well, last year, uh, and I'm a little surprised how well this came true. We said there was going to be mergers and acquisitions in the small and medium uh, banks across the state, and that has definitely happened. Uh, we're surprised at how well that was a forecast to it. Now, when you look at this sector moving forward, there's efficiencies to be gained from all these mergers and acquisitions. So that's why we have really no growth in there. There's economies of scales to be created. Here's our forecast for government. So state budget is going to decrease about 3.2%. The local... Um, Salaries is going to increase by 2.3%, I believe. So overall, our forecast for government employment is to increase by 0.9%, which is less than our overall general growth. So we're saying it's not really keeping up with the growth of the economy. In summary, when you think about momentum and how we're moving through this economy, 
you have to think about professional services and give it a lot more credit than what it's doing in adding new wages. It's becoming more of our primary driver, especially when you think about the technology and how the university is trying to match up with some components of this. We have to remember this. Our biggest resource is production workers. We're going to have limited growth because they're sitting idle. They're waiting for those jobs. We will not have significant growth until we re-engage our production workers, and it's not going to be with the existing industries. It's going to have to come with something else. We talked about this shift to the contingent worker. I think when we come back three to five years from now, we're going to have a deeper conversation about some of this labor market really wasn't moving up in the career ladder. We're also going to have problems with those financial uh, issues, the personal financial issues with some people in this community. The nation, we're seeing increased prices, but we have a slow growth economy, and that's going to put pressure on companies, right? They have all these other fixed costs and investments they put into it, and they're waiting for some of that return, and it's going to be difficult. Consumers are regaining their strength. We see employment and wages, I think, are going to increase. But I also want to hedge this a little bit because the consumer still is way over leveraged. Right? There is a lot still going on with them. So if there's any downturn, we're going to have a lot of risk to this. Provided consistent positive news, and we're seeing a lot of consistent positive news at the national level, you know, aerospace will see some limited growth, and that's a very good thing. It's going to have limited growth over the next two to five years. Now, for, here's our forecast. So we expect the economy to grow by 1.5%, which, again, is an improvement from last year is still below our potential, and I think it's below our potential because we're not utilizing the best resources we have. It is below the national growth. So if you're an optimist, this is a good news for you. We are increasing. If you're a pessimist, well, we just proved you right. <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs>